So I am Mark Pagan. Um, work for the the world's largest retailer, Walmart. Um, I'm on the Global WAN network engineering team. Um, our our focus lately has been on all things WAN, uh, everything from branch connectivity to to our our newly found core network, um, and that's that's kind of what we'll cover today. Uh, first of all, I want to say thanks to Techfield Day for putting this together and, and the invite. Um, I read Carl's blog at the airport on the way over uh, yesterday, and, and I was glad to, glad to hear that there was going to be some smart people here talking about segment routing. Yeah, <laughs> so I, I, I'm pretty sure they're, they're going to be speaking after me. So, um, I also want to want to thank you guys from a, a blogging standpoint. Uh, Unfortunately, I write like I talk, so blogging is pretty rough for me. But uh, I appreciate the folks that take the time to articulate technical topics and document that stuff for, for the rest of us. Um, today, I'm going to try and assemble some words, hopefully in sentence format, to talk about our greenfield deployment of segment routing uh, over our, our core network. Uh, up front, just a disclaimer, legally I have can't share everything that I want to share, so if I dodge questions, I apologize. Um, again, this is this is, this is me, uh, my contact info. Feel free to reach out with any follow-up questions or discussions. Let me know how, how fantastic everything was or how stupid I am. You know, if you want to tell me how stupid I am, give me some notes and I'll try to be less stupid next time, or at least try. Um, this this slide is is here kind of for two reasons. It gives a good a good overview of the history of Walmart for one, and our our marketing and communications folks really strongly encourage this kind of content in any external presentation. So, from a historical perspective, you know it gives a good a good overview of the age of the company and and it, you know in some cases the age of the the technology and the systems that that we have to deal with. Huge amounts of growth through the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Um, so we have, you know, we have a lot of typical enterprise technical debt that we have to deal with you know, through all of our all of our projects. A glimpse of Walmart today: um, we have 2.2 million associates, uh, serving 260 million customers a week. Uh, 11,562 stores. 72 banners, 28 countries, um, with e-commerce sites in 11 countries and 150 plus distribution centers servicing all those stores and customers globally. Um, so we have we have a really large scale operation. We have a lot of diverse environments. Um, so the the core network and segment routing in particular is is really our effort to try and distribute our connectivity to match kind of the movement through the industry of, of our distributing resources. We've been a less than, than stellar at that in the past. Uh, so we're, we're making some great headway there. So setting the stage on, on the, the placeholder for segment routing in our environment, um, we were tasked with the design and development of a new core network. So we kind of we're in a transition period from a very data center centric model from a connectivity standpoint. Um, so we relied heavily on connectivity into our data centers and as, as things progress and new technologies come available and resources become distributed, um, you know, we're trying to follow that model with connectivity. So that was, that was one of the main drivers for our core network in that regard. Um, when we started the project, we had all the typical uh, functional, non-functional requirements, you know, availability, scalability, reliability, all the standard abilities. A lot of the, a lot of the requirements that we had were infrastructure-based requirements. We didn't have a, a lot of clear-cut requirements outside of our own. So our team kind of took a step back and decided that we wanted to have more of a strategic focus on the development. Uh, we wanted to play chess, not checkers. And from a that statement on its own, strategic focus is kind of a, a duh moment, you know. 
obviously you want to have a strategic focus on, on efforts like this. And that's easy enough to do when you have clear-cut requirements. Um, but we kind of want to take a step back and approach it from, from a strategy initiative perspective. So we looked at the strategies that were in development within Walmart technology and, and tried to base our decisions on where we thought those were going to be headed in the future. Uh, we did. We, we had a generic roadmap for deployment on what we knew that our core network was going to to progress through. We knew that we were going to start off with a, a relatively small and simplistic deployment. A lot of the technology, a lot of the platforms, operating systems, all that stuff was new to our environment. But while while we knew that, we also we also focused heavily on our next phase expansion. So. For us, that was cost-effective domestic expansion. And during both of those processes, you know, while we were focusing on those two, we were also keeping in mind our, our international expansion plans and what our footprint might look like, how we would leverage the first several phases um, for, for that continued expansion. The question. Can you just define just real quick on what you're defining a core network to be? You know, you know, when backbone, you know, P node routers, PE in terms of like, like what you were replacing or. Yeah, absolutely. Um, from a replacement standpoint, our data center centric model, um, we, we, we had no backbone per se. We, we had basically DCI. We had layer three data center interconnect. Got it. Um, when, I, when I talk about core network from, from our perspective, we're seeing that as a collection of of primarily PE nodes for us. Um, we're kind of in a sweet spot where building out a bunch of dedicated PE nodes just doesn't make sense uh, at this point, anyway. So from our, from our core network perspective, it, it's, an, it's an MPLS network, uh, cool. typical, yeah. typical core backbone type deployment there. So during that process, uh, segment routing came up, uh, and during our evaluation period, th these were the things that, that really stuck out to us, things that we liked. Simplicity was a big one. Uh, config simplicity is, is nice, um, but more importantly, less protocol dependencies, interactions, essentially being able to eliminate the need for, for LDP and RSVP. That's a huge win for us. Again, everything's new to our environment, so, so that, that simplicity in itself was a huge benefit for us. Um, getting more for less, of course, Walmart loves more for less. Um, <laughs> <laughs> native FRR and, and TILFA, um, simplified operation with consistent label values across the core, uh, TE operation, Huge amounts benefit there for, uh, from a state perspective and ECMP capability, along with you know, less overhead from, from the additional protocols. And more flexibility, really, from a, from a uh, TE perspective. Uh, extensibility was also a good one for us. Um, we knew going into it, uh, some of the initial use cases that we had, but there was so much more on the horizon that it was really important for us to see kind of the options of where we could take it from there. And of course, uh, leverage a well-baked forwarding plane in MPLS. So you get all the, all the bells and whistles, everything that's been developed for MPLS over, over the years. So that, that was, again, a, another thing that we really liked. You mentioned TE. Did you guys have TE in place before doing yep. this? Okay. Not, not having a core network, we, yeah. we have limited, <laughs> limited uh, options right. for TE. What, what's your use case for it? I mean, do you guys have multi-tenancy within your environment and it's we have, reservations for these guys? At this point, we, we don't have any multi-tenancy. Okay. Uh, that's one of the things that, that we wanted to enable going, going to the core, a core model. Um, use cases for TE at this point for us is really going to be a tactical approach. Uh, so just just calming down hot spots, right? <clears throat> yeah. Doing like bandwidth? Are you doing bandwidth calendaring or there anything like that? Or are you? We will. We will. Okay. Yeah. So okay. we're we're kind of at the phase, you know, if you think about a linear scale between our capacity and, and 
you know, where TE starts making sense, needing TE, you know, we're still on the really low end of that scale. So, and that was, talking about the timeline, we knew we, knew we were going to deploy small and simplistic first on purpose. Uh, we really wanted to be able to have the environment available, get our operations teams and, and everybody really comfortable with the foundation before we would need to add another layer of new technology for us. So it, it worked out well in that we don't have the need for some of that stuff right now, but it's a great progression. So that, that's kind of where we're at right now. Um, well, clearly, we, we did have some concerns. Um, maturity was, was a big one, lack of operational documentation, uh, things like that. And we'll look in a minute at kind of the timeline of where our project phases landed with some of the milestones around segment routing and, and uh, actual code support. We relied heavily on, on blogs, actually, through some of our initial information discovery around segment routing, and there's, there's some really, really good ones out there. All the things that come with new technology, so, you know, obviously a, a lack of industry experience, all the gotchas that have been figured out over the years with, with other things, um, we knew that we were going to be kind of lacking there. Uh, code was another one. So we've, tradi traditionally, we've been very, very conservative on production code versions. So that was something that we knew going into it was going to be uh, another kind of major change for us and something that we would really need to pay attention to because you know, basically every new code release has additional features, additional functions, things like that. Uh, one, we were not concerned about the longevity and industry support. We saw a great following. You know, we... The benefits that, that we identified and the things that we liked about it, um, you know, were well documented through the operator groups that, that originally started, and we felt really good about the long term, the long term placement of SR in the industry. So this is this is the timeline, just to, kind of to give you some insight into where we were in our process along some of the milestones. Uh, our business case, you know, actually starts over here. It took us a long time. It, it was, it was a, a big change for us. It was a big investment. Luckily for us, uh, once we finished that, that portion and started the design phase, that's, that's really when some of the first milestones around segment routing kind of dropped from a, from a draft perspective and when we started looking into it. Towards the end of our design phase, when we were, when we were doing our more detailed evaluation and, and you know, some of our more detailed uh, conversations with, with our vendors, uh, you know, that, that's when things actually started becoming available. So that, was, that fit well into our timeline. It kind of increased the, the nervousness about the the maturity levels at the same time, but we had uh, we had a really successful testing uh, scenario. We did really kind of two two overall testing methodologies. Um, we did small scale internal POC, where we took you know we, we validated internally all the non SR features, uh, what I typically call data sheet validation. We validated the, our selected platforms. Uh, and did our necessary interop testing with with vendor and our you know some of our internal tool sets that was that was kind of one phase of our testing the other phase was a full scale poc that we did with the vendor uh, that did design validation feature functionality validation and we were lucky enough to be able to do a couple of iterations of that testing across you know fcs code and then the next, uh, the next code rev after that. So it worked out really well for us there. Um, post, post validation, when we actually started deployment, uh, things went really, really well. So well, in fact, that we've, we've expanded 
almost before we completed the migrations to our initial install. So that's, uh, this slide just kind of gives you an, an idea, you know, when I talked about our, what we liked and what our concerns were, how that kind of fit into to our project timeline versus some of the industry support for those things. It sounds like you had the opportunity to do a greenfield deployment for this right on your yep. hardware. Would you have considered doing the same segment routing deployment if it were not greenfield or if you had to get the equipment up and running without segment routing and then add it on layer? Um, that's a, you know, that's a tough one yeah. because from our standpoint, that's, I, I would like to say yes, but, you know, having that huge install base already there with a bunch of MPLS TE, that, you know, it would be a, a completely different set of, of evaluation criteria from that, from that. So would you say you actually drove part of the decision of building a new greenfield with segment routing as a justification? No. No? No. We, we had made the business case for a core network, basically. Okay. And it just so happened that, that during our design phase, you know, when we took a step back and decided that we were going to really go, we were going to kind of go outside of our normal box from a strategic perspective and figure out what we could do long term that would make the most difference for us. Uh, that's kind of where segment routing fell into our lab. So it, we didn't develop it around segment routing. It just so happened that, that the timelines were you know, almost perfect. Coincident right. that it worked. Okay. Now are you going to touch on what gear you used for, for your... Uh, or is that... Sure, right? yeah. yeah. I mean, this is another upfront disclaimer. I, I'm not here in uh, support of any specific vendor. I'm here in support of segment routing, but the platforms that we use were the ASR 9Ks. Okay, okay. So we did have some deployment challenges along the way. Uh, most of them we kind of anticipated. Um, internal operational knowledge of, and beyond ISIS, but everything. So, I mean, we were, we're in traditional enterprise shop. ISIS was, was not present in our environment before, so. We definitely had a learning curve there, um, but between XR, 9K platform, there was tons of new stuff. So uh, internal operational knowledge was, was kind of a, an anticipated challenge, one that we addressed and are still addressing with, with training and stuff like that. But there was definitely something to note along the way. Documentation gaps, uh, again, whenever we first started the deployment, there was there was limited documentation on, on specific SR stuff. A lot better now. Um, blogs helped out a lot, and some, some really, really smart guys helped us out quite a bit there. Um, lack of SRLG support, so without MPLS TE, no SRLG right now. That is kind of a specific to our topology, our, our physical topology versus our, our kind of logical overlay on that. Um, that was one of the things that we that we didn't anticipate going in, but by the time we identified that, you know, we couldn't we couldn't remedy it with with anything that made a lot of sense. So we're looking forward to SRLG support. Um, lack of OAM features was another one. Um, again, that's one of the things that's that's improving gradually, but it, it's definitely been something that we've missed considerably. And then again, keeping up with code deployments. I think we did three, three full code upgrades between our initial deployment and, and where we're at now. So that's been uh, it's been something that we anticipated, but but it's definitely been kind of a a thorn in our side as, as we go. Now, are you guys are you doing um, are you automating your configurations and, and deployments and things like that and version control and um, we are, yes and no. Okay. Um, we're automating the generation of our configurations. Okay. Um, You're but, not seeing any issues with, with this type of setup or anything no. like that? No. no. The, the configuration, actually building the configurations with, uh, with SR is incredibly simple. Okay. So that's been one win. So how did you, um, how, how much work did you have to do to integrate some of that with your existing tool sets? Aside from the fact that you may not have had that that particular um, uh, OS version, you know the, synth the syntax might be different. What, did it integrate? Uh, 
from an SR perspective, we didn't have any tool sets that that really leveraged even lab, you know, even even labels. So I mean, we didn't have anything necessarily to integrate into in that regard. Um, that's one of the things that we're strong on now is is bringing in the additional tools, enabling some of the tools that we have with additional functionality in order to, to kind of glean some of that stuff. Which that was, you know, that's that's an up, upside and a downside at the same time, right? We didn't we didn't have to, to integrate it with anything, but we didn't have anything. So, so th there's definitely pluses and minuses on that front. I'm curious about the uh, shared risk um, link groups, the S SRLG support that you needed. So what was the factor with that? Um, so let's say hypothetically we, you have a physical ring and a, a partial mesh mm -hmm. overlay on that. Mm -hmm. So hypothetically, if you had connections around your ring, point-to-point -point connections around the ring with additional express routes from one side to the other. So you got four, four points on a circle, mm -hmm. and, and you have essentially express routes between the two endpoints here. So, so when you say express routes, you mean actual physical links there, right? Uh, well, gla glass through on the same physical path. Okay, all right. So in that instance, okay. TILFA chooses the backup path, okay, which is actually all right. so it just actually offload level. It doesn't offload at layer three or at IP in the middle. It actually just is a rotem or something that just passes right. straight through. Yeah. So in a physical ring, optical. It's optical, yeah. right? So you're using like a rotem or something in there. All right. Good. So th that was that, was, and like I said, you know, that was specific to kind of our our deployment, um, but it was definitely something that popped up kind of unexpectedly. So some of our some of our benefits, um, the deployment config, awesome. Less protocols, less config, less complexity, less config variables and generation. Um, the training and and operationally ha has actually been really good too. Um, it seems like taking a group of of engineers that aren't familiar with MPLS, it seems like it sticks faster um, with SR. For some reason, you know, just just simply the the consistent label across there. For some reason, it, you know, that really seems to stick faster uh, than a you know than in a troubleshooting scenario specifically, as opposed to hopping node to node and, and and you know you need to look for this label here, this label here, this label here. So that's been one of the things that that's been nice. Um, it's also been nice that that we've been able to evaluate some of the traffic engineering features in in our lab settings. Um, we talked a little bit about SRT, and we're you know, we're definitely taking a, a tactical approach for for our initial TE investigations. Um, you know, running simulated failure failure analysis and having having action plans ready in specific instances where today we don't necessarily need TE for day to day operations. Um, BGP SRTE. Uh, I walked out of the first the first meeting we had where I, I got briefed on that and my, my mind was blown. It was it's awesome. Um, I'm seeing solutions to problems that I didn't even know were problems. You know, we've things where we've implemented BGP kludges for so long to address certain things um, that with less than elegant solutions. That was that's going to be a Awesome for us. Um, PCE integration. That's that's kind of on the on the edge of our our uh, testing right now. It's something that, that we're definitely looking into, considering so many of the of the segment routing features uh, from a from a high level are going to be tied to the ability to to have that kind of centralized view, centralized control to leverage a lot of those advanced features and functionality. So that is pretty much all I had content-wise. 
any any questions on any of those points that that you'd like to get into a little bit more detail where I can? One of the <clears throat> one of the bigger things that you know when you read the documentation on a big thing for segment routing is you know the application side of this, right? Like the app driving, the network pathing, that kind of thing. So do you guys see that as something you would look to where or are you confining segment routing to the network itself? Or is there a chance that maybe a server or something would push the label stack? So so right now we are totally one hundred percent focused on on the core. Okay. Now I say that I'm on the Global WAN team. We have a, a separate data center team, and I, I don't get to speak for them. Um, to us, it was one of the things that we liked was the, the extensibility, and that, that was one of the big portions, right? So we can take it, we can extend it into the data center, we can do you know, lots of additional things there, and then even from that point on, extending it to, to something like application-based TE end-to-end -end between data centers, things like that, is, is definitely one of the more exciting things that, that it's capable of. It's, it's definitely not something that, I'm not saying that our data center team is gonna be working on that anytime soon. They, they've, right. they've put a lot of work into their current solutions, but having that option out there, uh, I think once we get our core stood up and we have you know some actionable data there, it, it will be, more interesting to them to look a little deeper into to the possibilities. But did you see more flexibility with segment routing than, than with MPLS? Or was that, I mean, was it an operational thing? Or what was the big wedge that split you to segment routing compared to MPLS? Uh, for us, I mean, the, the biggest thing was the simplicity. Now, you know, it's, it's hard to sell what ifs. So there's tons of features. There's tons of really, really cool things that you can do with it, none of which we're doing right now. You know, yes, we have the capabilities were a big selling point. The simplicity for us was probably the thing that got us over the hump. But to me, it was always the, the, you know, the, the, the draw was that you get a lot of the um, benefits of having MPLS in your network, you know, and all the things that come along with that, but it doesn't come with a lot of the baggage that it used to carry that made it daunting and people didn't want to, you know, deal with that kind of thing. Um, so you, you, you talked about, you know, you, you, you did the Greenfield deployment, you had existing networking stuff, but not necessarily a core network. How operationally have you dealt with monitoring, alerting, and management of this new thing with, a, you know, presumably you didn't have uh, monitoring for any type of MPLS network in the past since this was Greenfield. Is there is there any, were there any gotchas there? Was it? Um, th that's, so our, our simplistic first start really kind of integrated well with our existing tool sets. So all of our monitoring, alerting, that kind of stuff didn't have to deal with VPNs. It didn't have to deal with, with a lot of the MPLS specific feature functionality things that you want to watch. Um, so we didn't really have any gotchas there besides t from a lab setting, a lot of our tool sets either weren't capable or weren't licensed to look at those things. So as we're building, uh, we're either enabling the existing tool sets or bringing in additional. Uh, from, a, from an alerting perspective, you know, from a, at the foundational level, platform level, you know, there, there, was, there was no issues there. There was things specific to XR that, that we had to to get used to and, and kind of tweak a little bit from, from our side. But as far as the MPLS segment routing portions, uh, there hasn't been anything specific that we've seen as gotchas, but there hasn't been anything specific that we've really added to, to watch that specifically. But really it was more an issue of just adding a new platform into a monitoring system rather than a completely new like underlying architecture, right? And, and the approach for the, for the overall architecture is, is something that, you know, if, if I have my way, then we'll, we will do it separately from our existing monitoring systems and, and integrate new systems with, with our, kind of our alerting foundation. Because there's definitely things out there that are more geared towards that than the things that a, a typical enterprise has available. 
there roadmap stuff or anything that you're aware of for better visibility and stuff? I mean, I think consistent labels across every box, that's huge by itself, but that doesn't really give you any kind of like real-time visibility beyond just like show MPLS LDP bindings or, you know, whatever. <coughs> Do you yeah. have any kind of, you know, all of this SDN stuff has to have hopefully better visibility and stuff at some point? Yeah, there's a, there's a couple of new things that, that are kind of on our horizon from a, from a traffic matrix standpoint, a traffic collector, things like that. Um, utilizing, utilizing BGPLS is going to be something for us that, that we'll do you know, kind of in our, in our lab first and evaluate and see what kind of additional information we can get out of that before we move to a point where we're, where we're taking action on that data. From a from a transport, sure, sure. The the question was on IPv6. Uh, are are we transporting it, or are we? Uh, we have embarrassingly somewhat. Uh, we have we have very limited IPv6 deployments. Uh, so it's it's kind of come as a. It was one of the things that go that went into our our decision on the core. So we can run an IPv4 core. Obviously, with with MPLS features, we have you know we have multiple options on how to handle the, the IPv6 transport over that core. Uh, it was definitely something that was that made a good bullet point on the business case for SR that that actual you know the actual network. Support for IPv6 core was there for for segment routing, you know, a lot sooner than something like LDP6 is going to be. So it, it was a good bullet point. It's it's not something that uh, it helped us sell it, but it's not something that we're we're actively using. So you, you mentioned earlier that you can't speak for the data center team, but I'll put you on the spot at least a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see this? So obviously, you're talking about this more from a core backbone kind of perspective, and and to me and Jason, I were kind of talking about this a little bit. That seems to make a lot of sense. But just from what you've seen, do you see this as applicable in the data center, especially like comparing, contrasting to like EVPN, which is it seems like does a lot of what this does, and maybe more, or you know, more specific for data center use cases. Do you see this being a good like actual data center thing, or is it really more kind of the core? Uh, long term, from a, from a unified network, end to end, data center through WAN through data center, I think it definitely has benefits. You know, the flexibility that you can have at the at the host or the application level, that's coherent across the entire network, to me, is a benefit. At the same time, I haven't been heavily involved with the data center development for for things like EVPN and VXLAN, and you know, all that NSH, all that good stuff. So. It's kind of hard for me to draw comparisons, not having, not knowing all the details about about the capabilities of those. But from an outsider view, I, I think it would be, I think it would be great to have that kind of unified sure. approach. Do you have any examples of? Um, I guess challenges that you encounter. You, you'd list, you had one slide that listed a bunch of challenges. They were really high level. So, I'm, if, if if you were to provide advice to viewers, okay, here's like two or three things that you really should pay attention to. What would those be? Uh, having a plan. I mean, that, that that's probably the the biggest thing. We luckily haven't had any show stopping issues. I mean, we haven't had anything that's been, you know, a holy crap, something just went terribly wrong. Um, so the, from, that, from that perspective, I guess my advice probably would be to be prepared more on the training, uh, the training and, and the approach, even from a management perspective, on the front end and, and do less development of those specific portions during or post-deployment. That was one of the things that, that I wish we would have done better uh, from, from on me. You know, I, I wish that I, the, the training would have, been, uh, would have been a broader scope within our organization and sooner. 
you know, part of that's just strictly my fault. Part of that is, uh, you know, part of that was, was our, our timeline. So. And lab facilities, I assume, is part of that training? Uh, absolutely. Make sure that you understand yeah, the technology and how to deploy it. Yeah, the okay. virtual labs have been priceless. The ability to hand uh, to hand some of our operations engineers, you know, a fully built virtual network with a problem somewhere, and say, "There's a problem here. Can you find it?" Mm -hmm. That's that's been awesome. Okay. So we try to wrap up some of most important to you. Which are the platforms which are most important to you from a segment routing point of view? Um, our, our our use cases are, are all ASR 9000. So that's, that's our selected platform for our core. Um, that's, that's pretty much our exclusive platform uh, at this point. It would be cool to see some of the additional SR features leaked over into uh, to the 1K and XE. We, have, we still have some, <coughs> excuse me, we still have some, some edges that are, that are ASR 1K that didn't necessarily make sense to have a 9K there. Um, it, it hasn't been difficult to work around those from a segment routing perspective, but it would be, it would be interesting. So in your initial testing, did you happen to try any oper interop between different platforms? Uh, no. For vendor platforms? Yeah. No. Okay. No, we are, uh, again, no, no vendor support here. We're, we're primarily Cisco shop, so, um, you know, we, we did look at, at some of the things and structured things in a way, like using a, uh, for, the, for the node SIDs, using an indexed, so, so there's flexibility in the, the global block label allocations. There, there was really nothing that we had to take into account from that standpoint that, that was too big of a concern. 